to be cutting out one of the flowers and dropping it onto another image. Anybody know which flower we're going to cut out? That one? Oh, right there. We'll fix this later on. Don't worry about that just yet. But here's the way we're going to do it. We're going to use a layer mask. At the bottom of the layers panel, you'll see this little icon. Looks like a little rectangle with a gray circle on the inside of it. If you click on that, there's a layer mask. Now, similar to when we were changing the color of the flower around that girl's neck, we're basically going to be taking a paintbrush and we want to match the softness of the edge. We've talked about this idea before. In photographs, there are no hard edges. You'll never see something where you know, the object ends at this pixel and then the background starts at this pixel. There's always this transition edge along here. And our task when we're cutting something out is to match that transition. So let's say, for example, you were cutting out a, a still life photograph that you would taken of a bowl of fruit and you've focused on the grapes in the middle of the bowl. They're nice and sharp and you know, a really crisp edge along there. But then further back, outside the depth of field, there's an apple that's out of focus. That has a softer edge. By using a soft-edged brush, if you take a look at the little pop-up over here, you've got the hardness slider. I always keep the hardness set to zero, always a nice soft-edged brush. And in essence, I change the softness of the edge by changing the size of the brush. A small brush with a soft edge will have a fairly hard edge. Let me bring that up past you up a bit. You can see that the hardness of this edge right now is a little bit smaller, it's a bit harder than the edge of this petal here. So I'm going to take a bit of a larger brush and just undo that. Bit of a bigger brush, do a little test swipe. And this seems to about match. I often see people going in with a really big brush like this, and they just start cutting out a background. Well, this edge is obviously quite a bit softer than the edge in here. A lot of people's excuse is, well, I'm just going to do a really fast job and then I'll clean it up later. Unfortunately, when you do that approach, you end up causing more work for yourself because ultimately you still need to get in and do a nice clean job along the edge. So if you do a large brush and get too close, you'll notice that you start hazing over the edge here. And if you look at the layer mask, if I hold down the option key and click on the layer mask, remember with the layer mask, black hides and white reveals. So as we're painting with black, we're hiding that flower and this giant transition edge is actually overlapping the edge of the flower. So we have partly invisible in here because there was that little bit of gray on the edge and partly visible in here. So we need to go along and you know, clean this edge up, clean this edge up. You're creating twice as much work for yourself because you got to do both sides of the edge and there was the initial rough job. So let's find a brush that matches the hardness of the edge. So call it the flower image, give it a layer mask, grab your paintbrush, just hit B on the keyboard. Zoom in on the edge of that flower too. I don't want to see people trying to cut it out like this. You can't see where the edge is. Get in close, get right in there. And if you go in close enough, you'll notice that this really annoying white grid will appear across the image. This is something Adobe put in a few years back uh, in a direct attempt to annoy their users. You can turn it off by going under View, Show, Pixel Grid. Now, when we're painting on a layer mask, we want to make sure that we have pure black and pure white selected. How do we get pure black and pure white? Default. D for the default colors. Excellent. You can either click this little icon here or you can simply hit D on the keyboard. And if you get the wrong color with that, let's say you wanted to paint with black and it gave you white, how do we reverse our foreground and background? X, X switches them around. Excellent. All right. Make sure you add 100% opacity. How do you do that from the keyboard? One. Z one, one would give you 10%. Zero, yes. And to change the size of the brush from the keyboard, the square brackets to the right of the P key. So you can use that to find an appropriately sized brush. And the next trick is simply click your way around the outside. Now, do you guys know about shift clicking? Yes. Yes. So if you do a click over here and then you hold down the shift key and do a click over there, it blink jumps in between those clicks. So let's work our way around the outside of that fl flower, just like we were doing when we changed the color of that flower around the girl's neck and keep going until you come back to where you started. And even if it's a curve, the shift clicking should still work if you do smaller jumps. And make sure you're trimming just enough that you don't see the background and that you're not taking off too much of the flower. If anything, you would want to err on the side of taking off just a hint of the flower. Otherwise, you could have a bit of a dark fringe remain around the outside. But the closer to that edge you can get, the better. A lot of times people will ask, well, if, you know, if you're just cutting out this flower here, why wouldn't you use like the magic wand or the quick select tool or something like that? 
Those tools can work if you're trying to really quickly, you know, mock something up for a client. Maybe they want to try a few different variations of things. You don't have the time to go through and do a complex mask like this. But when you're cutting things out using those tools, and you'll often see it in like, you know, publications here and there, little things get missed. Auto select tools tend to get a very kind of jagged edge. This way, you're going through every little bit of the image and you know that you're doing a proper cutout job on each part of it. We're using a round brush, right? I mean, that's, you know, yeah. straightforward. But look at this, we have a little V notch in this part here. I'm gonna show you a trick for getting in there and getting back out and leaving a little V notch on there. Normally with a round brush, you kind of get to about here and then work your way out. You'll miss that little bit in the end. But watch this. If I go past my destination, I'll just shoot right past it there, boink, right into the pedal. And then I'll hit X on the keyboard. Now I've got white and I can simply shave off that bit of excess. Go back to black and I can climb my way out of that V. And you'll find these little notches, you know, you're cutting out a person, you got that little V in between the fingers or armpits, places like that. Those will pop up all over the place. So that's the way of kind of getting in there and cleaning them up. And then X again to go back to hiding those pixels and climb back out. Like that? Yeah. Just go back, try again. Because it's a layer mask, you can make changes to it at any time. And if you find you went too far in, maybe you cut some of the flower off, no problem. Again, you can just hit X on the keyboard. Now I've got white, and I can reveal that again. That's the great thing about layer masks. They're totally non-destructive, so you can always go back, make changes to it. And once you've gone all the way around and come back to where you started, hold down the Option key, click on the layer mask, and that'll make the layer mask visible. You'll have what looks like the outline of some kind of jumping elf or something. Pretty usual garden <laughs> elf kind, I don't know. That's gnome, isn't it? Yeah. And just like when we're changing the color of that flower around the girl's neck, once you've option clicked, make sure there's no breaks in the line around the outside there. That'll be important for the next step. You can see I've got mine cut out, and I'm gonna take the magic wand. Here's the thing, that whole background has to become black for this to be put onto transparent. So, I'm gonna take my magic wand, I'm gonna do a click on the outside, and uh-oh, look at what happened. It selected the outside, you can see the little marching ants along there, but it also selected the inside. Why did that happen? Why did it do that? There's a hole in it, there's a break in it. Look around your outline, if there's any little gaps like that, just fill them in. And to a certain extent, you can probably guesstimate as to where it's supposed to go, so I'm gonna grab some black paint and I'll just do a little fill in like that. Now when I take the magic wand and I click out here, it selects just the outside. Am I ready to just fill this with black or is there something else I need to do? Watch this, I'm gonna go edit, fill with black cause that'll hide the background, right? Filler with black, hit okay. Look at that, great job. It, oh, except for that fringe around the outside which is leaving a little extra bit of visibility out there. Hmm, what's causing that fringe? Well, here's the way the magic wand works. I clicked on this and it's right now got a tolerance of 32, which means that it selected white, which is 255, and anything within 32 levels from that zero to 255 range. So it selected the very brightest pixels, which was white, which was these light grays around here, but look what it didn't select, the dark grays. Now I could try increasing the tolerance, tell it except anything within 250, and it would get pretty much everything, but there will always be some little thing on the end, some really dark pixel that gets missed. So there was one other step. I wanna take this selection, I wanna expand it outwards into that little black border. So the next step, once you've got the outer part selected, figure out roughly how many pixels we'll need to extend that. I'm guessing one, two, looks like two should do for mine. Depending on the size of the brush that you used, yours will change. If you used a larger brush, you'll probably have to expand yours more. I'm just gonna do two pixels, and I'm gonna do select. So we go into the select menu, because we wanna do something to a selection. Pop down to modify, because we wanna modify that selection in some way and we go down to expand, because we want to expand that selection outwards. Right now we have this area selected. I can expand it out by two pixels for mine. And there may be some trial and error there. You may find, oh, it didn't quite go far enough. You can expand it a little bit more. Maybe it went too far. Maybe it jumped from here right out to the other side. If you filled it with black then, you'd be trimming some of this flower off the outside. So undo it, do a smaller amount. Once it's roughly in the middle of that black line, we can then go edit, fill, and for contents, we'll choose black. And whenever you're done with marching ants, get rid of them. So either under select, deselect, or the keyboard shortcut is command D. 
And guys, if any little bits get missed, in any little V notches like this, you'll often find that that expansion wasn't enough to get into that crevice. So just paint some black over top of those things. Once you deselect, you can take that paintbrush, just hit B on the keyboard, and you can just clean up any little bits that got missed. Okay, so what are we gonna do with this guy? Well, first off, we need to fix that thing that said fix this. Option click on the layer mask again. So hold down the option key, click on the layer mask, and that will show the layer. It alternates between showing the layer mask and showing the layer. And you'll notice that, oh, I see all the flowers and the, the wall and stuff behind it, but we don't see it over here because the black on the layer mask is hiding it. This is all that it's revealing. But look at this. This is where that other leaf, that petal, was kind of hanging over. Remember on the original? Fix this. All right. We're going to do that. First off, when you want to clone, you want to fix, you want to do something on the image, not the layer mask, what do we have selected right now, the layer or the layer mask? Yeah. So before we start cloning this out, select the layer itself, the actual flower. So make sure those little four white corner points, those little four corners, make sure they're around this here. And now let's grab the clone stamp, just hit S on the keyboard. And here's the cool thing. If we hadn't used the layer mask, if we'd simply erased the background and I sampled a bit of the petal here to clone it over top of this little mushy bit here, I could accidentally clone out into the background. But because we have a layer mask here, it's hiding anything that is protected by the black. So if I were to sample this bit of the petal here, so with the clone stamp, I'll hold down the option key, get that little bullseye, I'll do a click, that samples these pixels. I'll clone them over top of that little schmutzy bit and watch what happens. Even if I bleed out into the background, nothing happens because it's hidden by the layer mask. So I mean, I actually can, you know, clone out into the background here, but because that layer mask is hiding it, it doesn't matter. So these little schmutzy bits here, just sample them out. Same thing on the tip up here. You can see we got this little, I don't know what that is, clone it out. Okay, so guys, now that we have this flower cut out, let's put it onto something. Open up the file called Pendrel. It's in the same folder. It's right below the layer mask. There's one called Pendrel, which has a nice little strawberry donut in there. Mm. I know, right? And we're going to take that flower and we're going to put it on the donut just for fun. So once you've got this flower cut out, there's a few ways of getting this flower over to that donut document. If you're in windowed mode like this, I could simply grab the layer and drag it over, that would work. Oh, cool. But if you're in full screen mode or using the application frame, you could grab it, drag it up to the tab, but here's an easier way. Simply right click on the name layer zero and you'll see something that says duplicate layer dot dot dot. Whenever you see three dots, it means that there's some other option that's gonna pop up, so we'll click on that. And it's asking us two things. First off, what do we wanna call it? I'll just call it, I don't know, flower. You can be creative if you like. For the destination, it says, well, where do you want this to go? We're in the document called Layer Mask, and by default, it goes to the document called Layer Mask. So if you were to hit OK, it would simply make a duplicate of the layer. You'd have two of them in the Layers panel. But if you choose the other document, the pen drool, and if you get a warning like this, just hit OK. Usually the default is pretty accurate. Yeah, guys, when you duplicate it over, it might appear really low in the frame. Yeah. Just Grab your move tool and you're like, hey, hey, it's way down there. Grab it, and drag it up. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to put it on the side of my donut here. You can... <laughs> there we go. It, it's, a, it's an elf having a bath. It, he's, he's using that as a flotation device. <laughs> it makes no sense. Actually, another thing we're going to do, let's give this flower uh, a shadow so it looks like it's actually there. Because, you know, the donut's casting a shadow, the strawberry's casting a shadow. Obviously, this flower would cast a shadow. Simplest way is to use the layer styles, which you can get at the bottom of the layers panel under the little FX pop-up. And there's one called Drop Shadow. And you'll notice with the Drop Shadow, you've got a few options here. One of them is Angle. Basically, Drop Shadow kind of simulates a light shining from whichever direction you're specifying the angle. So right now, I've got it coming almost from straight above. And you can see the shadow appearing below the layer. You can play around with distance. You can play around with angle. Probably an easier thing though, guys, watch this. In the image, if I click and drag, you can actually move that around. You can see the angle and the distance changing. 
Uh, at the bottom here, size. There's a slider called size. The larger it is, the softer the light source is. So if you pull the size down to one, you got basically like a you know sunlight, point source light. Take a look at the shadow on the plate. Kind of match the softness of that. 